Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the SUP Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Luke Trevisi. Uh, the crew is all here, full force, baby. I got Chris Cheney to my left. What's up? And Lawrence Deloach to my right. What's up, everybody? What's up? What's How up? was Thanksgiving for everybody? Oh, it was great, man. It was wonderful. A lot of food? Y- yes. A lot of fun to be had. Yeah, a lot, a lot of, of food. Fun. A lot of food. Wait, uh, Lawrence, did you wear your uh, Turduncans? For dinner, like while you were eating? No, I didn't. No, I, was, I was in, I was in basketball shorts, bro. No. <laughs> did you bring Wait, the box with you? I you were like, look, like look at what you didn't put did. it up next to everything. No, I did. I did not. I did, I, I should have. That, I, but I, I, I still have multiple Thanksgivings to, to do that. So. <laughs> Thanksgiving's I, the, one of the holidays that doesn't really get a lot of sneaker like festive love. You know what I mean? I feel like there's Christmas shoes, there's Fourth of July shoes. Like I feel like Valentine's Day. I feel like that's everyone gets one except Thanksgiving. Not since concepts came through. Concepts, yeah. like, let's my concept brothers game. holding let's, it down. Let's flip the game. I think yeah. I think that's one of the. First, I mean, once again, there's probably there's probably shoes that we don't remember, but this is like the first like turkey themed sneaker. Well, hold on. You don't remember the Cornucopia Elevens? <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember those ones Luke, put us on yeah put us on put us uh, on the game oh they, they were like it was like a cornucopia all right listen guys <laughs> there's a lot of exciting stuff that happened during the weekend all right we had black friday happen mm-hmm. but uh we you know we've got a bunch of merch coming we sorry we got jordan's coming out next <laughs> month a lot of stuff to talk about i'm really excited about but first of all did anybody see that fight that happened Last night, it was Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. exhibition match, craziness. What did everybody think? I didn't see it. Uh, I just saw Nate Robinson get lit up on Twitter the way that Jake Paul lit him up in the ring. But I, that's all I saw. I didn't see anything else. All right. Well, first of all, let's let's just start out by saying it was uh, it was amazing to see uh, Mike Tyson at 54 years old and Roy Jones at 51 be in that ring. It was an exhibition. It was two minute rounds, but for them to go 16 minutes at that age and Tyson still showing that, yo, he's got shit in the oh, tank. He'll, he'll fuck you up. Dude. He will fuck you up. And it was just dope to see those two legends. Like, you know, after, you know, Mike Tyson, you know, one of the greatest boxers, Roy Jones too, one of the greatest boxers of all time, but the history of Mike Tyson and you and how, Fear that man was when he when he stepped in the ring. Have you you guys ever just watched like older like Tyson? Too? Obviously, he moved oh, around, but dude, you know, he's an animal. I mean, just it was like the fear that you had. Like he would come to the ring, and you would just see the fear in the opponent's eyes, and they would get knocked out immediately. Oh yeah, dude. It was uh yeah, it was it was fun watching all all, all the old highlights uh, leading up to the fight. That was just like oh yeah, this was an era of boxing that I just wasn't present for really but it was like oh man what what a fun era it must have been yeah, yeah. i mean i think i think the real winner of of everything was snoop dogg i mean did you hear snoop his commentary dogg fucking mur he was oh killing. wait snoop dogg commentated yes yeah, oh yeah, i didn't yeah. know that i might have tried to tune in for that if i had known doggy was going to be uh commentating i mean he honestly was he was insightful he was funny he he said the right things. He didn't talk too long. He he was perfect. And and I think a lot of people are going to really look towards using Snoop Dogg in some capacity uh, on the microphone, whether it's, you know, I don't know if, if he can parlay that into a WWE, WWE type of thing. WWE, bro? Come on. The only reason why I don't know, because he would have to obviously kind of tone what he does down a little bit in terms of like, you know, in terms of the cursing. But I mean, he was just on point. Yeah. And uh, and I loved it. I thought it was like I said, it was awesome to see Tyson. It was it, obviously the results were were fixed. Oh uh, yeah, because, uh, it ended in a draw. Chris it ended in a draw. Uh, I saw that it ended in a draw, but I had a hard time believing that. Well, Vinny pa- uh, Paz fucking he he scored it dumb on purpose. Wait, like, Vinny Paz the uh, the other rapper, the underground rapper? No, 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 the boxer. Oh. Oh, okay. I thought that was just a panel of <laughs> rappers. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah, go, go, go. No, he uh, he scored it, like, I don't even remember. It, he scored it ridiculously in uh, in Roy's favor, and I think that was, the po- like, to just be like, none of this matters, you know? Yes, and w- what was interesting to me was, like, every round they would update odds, so it would be, like, Tyson minus $3,000, like, 3000 you know, 
Roy Jones plus 1800. So if you're actually, if you're betting, you know, on this and you're getting those odds, you just basically, you lost your money. You yep. see what I'm saying? Because it, it's, I don't know, who, you know, if people were taking action on the fight, but obviously DraftKings had some type of, you know, some type of interest in, in getting people's money. And then for it to be a draw was like total bullshit. But I think the moral of it was, it was just, it was entertaining and it was great to see these two guys provide a, some, a medium of entertainment during this pandemic. Yeah. Nate Robinson came out looking like a fool though, Chris. I mean, woo. I mean, his first move out of the, out of his corner when the, when the bell rang was basically just like tackle Jake Paul, Mm -hmm. Uh, a dude that's like four or five inches taller than him and looked like he was actually working out this whole time. Uh, And then when the ref broke him up, he was like, all right, let me do that again. And then he did that six (laughs) more times and then just kept falling. Okay. So that's what I I was going to talk about. We talk about Jake Paul, who, who plays the, the heel role exceptionally well. Like he's unlikable. People this just is a don't... man. This is a man who watches wrestling. I'm talking about Lawrence here. This oh is... yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Who understands I've... the the role of a heel? Oh, I, 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 as a person who I've watched wrestling for, you know, for years since I was a child. Um, I don't watch as much anymore, but I just understand the psychological aspect of what this guy is, he who he is, and he comes off as unlikable. Yeah, and and when you see a guy like Nate Robinson, who people he was a fan favorite in the NBA. He, you know, he had one slam dunk uh, title. So everyone is hoping that Nate Robinson wins, like beats up. Like it's like Nate is from the hood. So it's kind of like, yo, you just want to see this, this hood, the uh, black dude beat this pompous <laughs> white guy. That, and you, could, Fox, you could say it, Lawrence. You wanted the black guy to beat up the white guy. No, no. What I'm <laughs> listening, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say boxing is one of those sports where Race is very it 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 it, I it's the main tactic in all the Floyd Mayweather fights, you know. It's the main tactic in Pacquiao fights. That's That's what I'm saying. Passes in the seats. That's Filipino. That's what I'm saying. It's what it is. It's it's you take a black guy, you take like a a Latin guy, and now you've got the Latin you know group of people cheering, hopefully to see the white the black guy get his ass beat. The black guy. You know, he got his black fans. It's like, fuck that. I want to see my black brother win. It's it's fucking rule number one to me in fighting all the way back. I watch. This is so weird. But one night I was like a little high and I was watching uh, a Jack Johnson fight. You guys familiar with Jack Johnson? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not familiar with you ever being high. Okay. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> so it's occasional edibles here and there. And, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I... So I'm just watching this and it, it it's 1912, you know, it's fucking, you know, years ago, hundreds of years, hundred years ago. And, and literally he's fighting this white dude in, in a sea of white people. They want Jack Johnson to fucking, because Jack Johnson was, you know, he was known for fucking white women left and right back, back then, you know, they made the, the man act, made it illegal for him. And, and I just remember, like, the, whoever was the commentator, I don't know if they dubbed over, but they, you know, they Jack Johnson beat the white dude, and they said, look at this white guy, or whatever his name was, look at him losing to Jack Johnson. He's a disgrace to the white oh race. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I just, I just laughed because I said, that is how boxing is. So, to get back to the Nate Robinson, Jake Paul shit, we wanted to see Nate beat him. But Jay Paul has some other shit going, man. And did you watch the fight, Chris, or you didn't watch that fight? No, I just saw the clip of uh, seemingly they have no skill or tactic. They seemed like they were just swinging in the knockout clip that I saw. And Jake just happened to get him with that right hook or whatever it was, and then Nate was down. Luke, you saw it. Yeah, I saw it. What did you think? Uh, I thought Jake Paul actually knows how to box. That's what that just made me realize. Because... During that whole fight, like, there was a moment, I think in round two it was, where after Nate had him in, a, in another grapple, they, uh, they broke the grapple, and then Nate started to back off. But at that point, I was like, this is, it's too late, because he's already gassed, and, and he's got no, like, mm-hmm. he, the, Jake already knows that he has the uh, advantage over him. And, like, it's a psychological game at that point. So then Jake goes for a feint, 
And then he goes for like a, a, a combination, like, and Nate bites on the feint. And then he gets the, the combination in. And that's when I was like, oh, okay. At least he understands like the basics of mm-hmm. boxing as opposed like Nate really looked like an amateur out there. It, it, he looked like an amateur. And the other thing I'm going to say is Jake Paul had, he had a, a previous fight. So yeah. this was, you know, so he was already the favorite coming in in terms of on the, you know, Vegas odds and everything. But what I realized with Nate Robinson was, is you can have all the training in the world for whatever time. But when you get in that ring and it's just you, your brain, your fist and another man, a lot of that training probably went out the window, you know, out the, the window how to protect yourself, how to defend, how to, you know, how to properly, you know, try to, you know, conserve energy. And I think he went for the, like the, the backyard, you know, street fight where it's like, I'm going to fucking knock him out and it's going to be quick. And, and Paul was picking and choosing the spots. Now this brings me to my next, uh, my next observation. The internet is a cold world. Yo, oh, fucking world. Oh my Yo God. the internet, I was just trying to find the clip on Twitter, but there were so many memes about it that I couldn't find the clip, bro. Dude, there's like a, a Nick Young tweeted out after he lo- after Nate lost. He was like, this is not representative of the NBA family. <laughs> Damn. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it? Uh, you had one, you posted one on your Instagram, Chris, that was like, oh, you need, we need to be specific when we manifest things. <laughs> yeah. when he had Nate a tweet, said, I was like, Nate Robinson had a tweet that said I was going to shock the world, and boy, he, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Curry fucking did some shit, like, he, he replied to something that Nate said, too. It was clowning him, 100%. Yeah, and it, it makes you realize that, you know, that in this, in this internet world that everything you do is is waiting for someone to make fun of it yeah you understand what i'm saying like like someone like no matter who won that fight if it now if it went the distance or whatever but the way it played out it just it, it, like nate robinson like all of his accomplishments in the nba are going to be like it's going to be disrespected in a sense because everyone's going to be like, well, you got your ass beat by that fucking YouTube kid. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, it's true. And it sucks. It sucks. But it also at the same time, I mean, Nate's got, I mean, I, they all, I mean, obviously Nate Robinson got paid for this and, you know, there's money in a lot, you know, and they're making money in a pandemic. But shit. Yeah, what a way. <laughs> there's your boy. There he is, sleeping. Sleeping. Yes. And that was the hit right there. Oh, this gave me – that that knockout gave me flashbacks to Manny Pacquiao getting uh, knocked out by Marquez because mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the same memes came out of it, like the Simba pushing oh, the dead yes. body meme. That one yes. was, like, one of the best <laughs> ones. The Tempur-Pedic mattress one, that was another yes. one that came out of it. All just bringing me, like, flashbacks to when my hero got knocked out. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. It's it's the internet, Vicious. man. And it ain't gonna stop, man. Just cause you know it's it's mon tomorrow's Monday, and uh, and people are they're gonna they're gonna continue to have a field day with this shit. So it's true. Uh, I think we got another two weeks at least of burning this, and then after that, it's just gonna be sprinkled in left and right. You know? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Um. Well, we were talking about Monday. Cyber Monday's coming up. Yep. But what just passed was Black Friday, baby. Yep. Anybody yeah. pop anything? No. <laughs> I'm really proud of you, Lawrence. I'm really I'm pr- proud of you. I'm proud of myself, man. I was I, I don't, you know, it's I always try to tell myself just don't buy anything. Oof. I uh what did I get? No, I got I got Christmas presents this year. I was I was oh, nice. about it. I, I had the impulse to buy and then I was like, let me buy for other people so I don't feel like a piece of shit. Yeah. Be cool. Yeah, be that guy. You know, but what was also happening around that time was Goat Black Friday, and that was a nightmare in itself. Did you guys uh, participate in the Goat Black Friday stuff? I did not. I didn't participate in any Black Friday stuff. I was trying to get my sneaker shit together. I think I told you guys last week, I like went to my mom's house for Thanksgiving, and I was looking at all the sneakers I had, and I was like, I got to get rid of some of these. So I was trying to like take pictures and shit to put them on whatever website I feel like putting them on. But no, didn't, didn't do anything for, as far as purchasing. 
I'm so jaded with GOAT uh, in terms of like those Black Friday things that like no matter how many tokens I had or whatever fucking coins that GOAT was giving me, I'm, I'm just not with it. So I, yeah, I'm pretty salty this year because I did something dumb this year. So what I did was I did like a bunch of the raffle stuff. Mm-hmm. I put in a bunch of tickets all over the place, all of the shoes that I wanted. Travis got fours. Um, what else did I put them into? Uh, you know, off white fives, all that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. But I also put some of like half of my to- my half of my raffle tickets into a ten dollar goat credit. And the reason I did this was because fucking I bet that goat is really just giving away these ten dollar raffle tickets. Like you know what I mean? Like they're just the credit, yeah. They're just giving mm. away little peanuts for the guys who only order on that website every now and then. It's just like every other store. Like mm-hmm. they pretend like it's not, but let's let's not pretend like they don't have like a client list of people who are either selling or buying in bulk. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they're probably taking care of those people first. Of course. You know. Wait. Um, so did you get a credit? I did. I ended up getting. I ended up getting the ten dollar credit one of those days. Oh, mm-hmm. all right. Uh, and I was like, oh fuck. And then yeah, it was just. That's all I got was a ten dollar credit. I had five thousand tickets by the end, and ten dollars is all they could give me. <laughs> of course. Um. But what also was happening during that time was the drops, uh, which they were dropping some of like people's favorite sneakers, uh, throughout the years. Uh, during the Black Friday sale, so we'd like surprise drop some things, and one of the things that popped up that got a lot of attention were the Red Octobers selling for two forty five. Oof. Oh. The original two forty five retail price. Yes, that's right. You know, I, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say I hate when when I know it's it's you know quote unquote it's it it brings attention to the platform. But in actuality, who, who's getting them? Because, you know, it, it, this is like one, this is what a lot of stores do. They, they hype up, they have the, oh, we're, we're selling, you know, this off-white Chicago and this, you know, Red October for retail and the, the app crashes or, you know, or it's, you know, the sneaker's not even there. It's just done to drive customers to your, what you're selling, your product. So now you miss out on the red Octobers, but you buy something else. And it's great marketing because it, it bought, you know, got a lot of attention to goat, but I, come on, man. Luke's going to be on their board one day, just yeah. trying to fill time, not be on Instagram. Realize he got $10 credit. Oh, this one's on sale. Oh, it's only 60 bucks right now. I'll use my $10 credit. Only 50. Ooh, don't tempt me with a good time, buddy. That's you. You're looking at some Ewings. Do not <laughs> tempt me with a good time. Buddy, the- <laughs> I, I will say this, uh, the, the GOAT drop system uh, makes me appreciate sneakers a modicum more because at least with sneakers, it, it feels like it's still a mess and it's still bullshit, but I mean, it was like, it's, I feel like, I feel like I have a chance on GOAT, like I'll see the, the drop listing, the notification and I'll be mm. like, fuck it. It's not even worth the waste of time it's about to be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also that drop that weekend was the Jordan, uh, the fire red Jordan fours, mm-hmm. another black Friday treat. Mm-hmm. Did anybody go for them? Nope. I did not. I'm proud of myself. I did not. What, who is this new Lawrence who's eating edibles and not, not he's eating edibles. He has hair. He's not buying shoes. <laughs> <laughs> he's not reselling the big ones he gets. What is this? What is this identity? <laughs> I know. I know. I know that I feel like, um, Nah, I just feel like um like if I get a pair of sneakers now, it's it's something that I like I really want to keep or like like it more so like I wouldn't want to pay resale for if that makes sense. So like like the Turduckins, like the Turduckins. I I didn't I will never pay I wouldn't pay resale for them, but you know, I would keep them or like, you know, whatever I get, but like when it comes to the fire red fours, I'm like shit. I can't, even though they're originals and like, you know, I haven't had a pair of fire red fours in like 14, 15 years. Like, I just can't, I can't keep justifying like saying, yeah, I'm going to get this and this and this and nope, can't do it and won't do it. Jordan's not getting me. (laughs) Not this time. Not this time, man. I, uh, I tried. I tried real hard 
not really. I, I had like I put into maybe like two raffles and a and a uh, and and sneakers drop day, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'll let the I'll let the sneaker gods decide what's good. And the sneaker god said, "Fuck you, Luke. You're not getting these shoes." They had a vengeful, a vengeful, vengeful week. take for you, bro. I feel like I feel like now that because I had that week where I hit like three times in a row, I feel like the sneaker gods are punishing me. Yeah, you used all your luck in one week, dude. I, I yeah. was gonna say, what's interesting is like for for these to be such a huge general release, and the and the sneakers that you were getting, you know, Luke, during the fucking, you know, during your streak, it's like shit, man. Like you would think you would win those, you know? I know. I thought I thought I had it in the bag. I got cocky. Some of my friends were like, "You want me to put in for you?" And I was like, "No, nah, I think I got this." Woo. But what I what I will say about a, a release like this, I mean, there's there's I from what I read and what I saw, I believe there was over two hundred and fifty thousand pairs of these sneakers. So wow, yeah, I mean, Black Black Fridays and the, and then the holiday Elevens are usually always like super mass produced. Yeah. So what you're gonna see is in, in the coming weeks or months that there's gonna be some type of you know Jordan is gonna have their you know their Jordan Reserve where you know you can purchase these or multiple websites is going to have where you may just you know you'll have other opportunities so it's not like it's just this is it yeah yeah that's true yeah and if you want them like i said you know you you can definitely get them and look i mean the way when when all these pairs start coming in from the online retailers bro you're gonna if you want you you could pay maybe 20 dollars over retail if you truly want them that's true it's true. I already have a guy who's like 40 over retail, which is like, it's still not bad. Mm-mm. Not bad at all. Mm-mm. So, Chris, I mean, you um, you didn't see anything in November that you liked. Uh, we're coming into the final month of this wild, insane, stupid worst year for a lot of people <laughs> not fun everyone is fucking really worried about what's going to happen in 2021 but we're coming to the final month of the year mm-hmm. and i wanted to know chris we have some uh, interesting jordan brand releases uh one uh is obviously we talked about the fire red force but the jubilee 11s are the next mass produced jordan sneaker that everyone's gonna go for yep they already had a uh shock drop release correct yes yes yeah so they're already on some people's feet correct actually you know what i'm not really mad at the jubilee itself it's like a clean 11 there's nothing really wrong with it and you don't have to like necessarily like cater too much to the shoe you can just wear whatever you want and then put those on Mm -hmm. um i don't know if i'm gonna shoot for those though i'm not really an 11 guy but i respect those they're just not one that i would actually reach for but what do you guys think uh i'm also not really big on 11s uh just i i don't really own any i've never really had like owned any but again, same thing. I like the detailing. I like that kind of that silver jump man on the back. It's very clean. Uh, if I saw somebody in the street wearing them, I might give them a little nod. Uh, the nod, like we learned from the Netflix that, show. Like we learned Sneaker from the heads. <laughs> <laughs> The nod, which none of us knew about. None of us knew about. <laughs> none of us had never ex- had ever experienced the in nod. all of our years of wearing sneakers. <laughs> what do you What do you think, L? What do you think about the jubes? Uh, I'm just, I don't, like, when I was a teeny bopper, yeah, I would love the, a pair of 11, oh my god, holiday 11s? Come on, man, if I was, you know, when I was a kid, the Christmas 11s were the shit, um, mm-hmm. but as an adult. A grown Lawrence. A grown Lawrence. I just can't get into the 11s anymore. Every, I buy a pair of Jordan 11s usually every holiday for, like, you know, from, like, 2008 or, you know, 2009 on, I end up selling them. Yeah. Oh. And I ended up getting rid of them. Like I, I had Concords, uh, black and red elevens. Thir- I've had, I've had all, pretty much all of them at one point. And I've just the Columbias, which were the Legend Blue joints. Like it's just, I just don't have, I don't have a home or a heart for like patent leather elevens anymore. Yeah. yeah, I feel that. So, it, but it's interesting because we we've seen. Um, the Concord 11s, when those came out, and I believe those came out in 2018, so those came out, I believe, two years ago, and um, and then uh, they were so mass produced and no one was buying them, and then in 2019, and then all of a sudden we get the last dance, and now everyone's like, I need Concords. Yeah, I, wait, what was the yeah. what was the shoe last year? Was it Concord? 
No, so or was it Space Jams? Last year was Brad 11s, wasn't it? Brad 11, that's what it was. Yes, and then the previous was. year was Concords. Right, previous okay, okay. Concords. Yes. Which is, I mean, which are you know, arguably the two greatest 11s, you know? Yeah. And and somehow, and I, you know, I'm going to always say this, no matter how many Jordan 11s they produce, it it's the 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 demand outweighs the supply. And motherfuckers is still going to get shut out. Yeah, bro. I I gotta. I can't lie to you. When I saw it in the when I saw those in the dock, because I I don't. Even, I've never owned a pair of Concord Elevens, but I look at them and I'm like, they look good on Jordan's feet. I'll tell you that much. They look real good on Jordan's feet. Yeah, I think they're one of the best Elevens. Um, part of me wishes I I did keep them, but the other part of me is just like, you know what, man? Like, nah. Yo, I'm still trying to find a nine and a half for this ten and a half in my frag three. So like you that's still haven't gotten that yet. Well, no, I mean like last week was I mean this this week, last week was Christ uh I mean Thanksgiving shit. So like I couldn't see this is the thing though. This is what really annoys me about round two, because they still refuse to do the phone call shit. Mm-hmm. Right. So I have to go there during this pandemic climate. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. I do. How else do I know? You Watch. you follow the Instagram, yes. Yeah, sure. you check the Instagram, that's all. Sure. But yes. I would like to go in there and just be like, hey, what's up? But it's a problem getting over there. So that's what my that's like my Christmas journey is going to be. It's the 12 days of Chris to get to my frag three. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even have a nine and a half yet. <laughs> so you're going to have to wait even longer. I'm surprised while you were up in Boston, you didn't try to check one, some of the spots out there. No, it wasn't. I did. I, yeah, you probably didn't really have much much time for that. No, plus I had the, I had the girl with me, so it wasn't like necessarily like – not only couldn't we not go out, I had the lady with me. So this wasn't even something where I could just go to, like, my hometown bar and, like, you know, still have fun with my friends with her around. This was, like, I couldn't go nowhere. Not that she's not fun. Don't think I'm saying that. But, you know, this wasn't, like, necessarily the best travel Thanksgiving. Is she, is she there right now? Just blink twice. Is no, she... she's, not, she's not here. She's not here. I'm just checking. There's no one around. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. We got to get you those, those nine and a halves at some point. I'm trying, man. I've been... <clears throat> I'm I'm even doing that annoying thing where like I'm commenting on old posts of that shoe, going like, "Hey, does anyone have a nine and a half? I spent like an hour just like using the hashtag, going through everybody's posts to see that what was it like time sensitive, like time like around the same time, mm-hmm. and then putting like, "Yo, I got a ten and a half. Does anyone need a nine? Like, let me get a nine and a half. I did that for like an hour, then fucking nothing, dude. It's annoying. And that was it. That was the most effort you put into this, huh? Fucking yeah, I mean that's all I could be at the at the, right now. I hear you, but as as an Asian as an Asian father, I have to tell you, try harder next time, maybe. Yeah, you gotta try harder, bro. <laughs> hey man, I gotta try harder. But look, I mean, look, I'm a, it's a slow burn for these guys. I said I wanted them. I have it kind of, and I'll get them eventually. Okay, that's fair. That uh, fair. Lawrence, you were talking about patent leather on a Jordan. Now the Jordan ones that are coming out this week are those patent leather as well, the metallic golds? Yes, they are. Yes, what do you are. think about those? I am. Those come out, I believe, tomorrow. Okay, am, so so if I you're am. listening to this live, if you're listening to this when the day it came out, it's yes, Monday. live. They're out today. They're yeah, they're yeah, they'll be out today. If I'm correct, I don't want, I don't want to say the wrong uh, thing, but I believe they are coming out. Yeah, they are coming out to Monday. So I don't, I don't know. I'm not a. They look. They just look so bland i don't know if it's the color blocking or, or it's just it just has a weird vibe to me the do black ones it, right yeah. yeah do you have it chris i have it up already oh you do here i'll give you i'll give you the uh yeah because i i would have the same you know i had the same issue when you could, i was you could throw it up. looking into when i was looking into them as well because like the more you look at them they, i don't know what it is i think it's the dull kind of gold upper that just doesn't really do it for me, but mm-hmm. like, co- like as a shoe in general, like I don't know, man. There's gonna be so much creasing on that leather. I don't really like it. Yes, as a person who's had, I had gold toes, the gold toe patent leathers, and I and right. the same thing. I just got to the point where I was like, I don't trust myself with those, and I just got rid of those. Like you, you I don't know. I'm not mad at that. That you know like amber gold i'm not mad at that i'd be more annoyed if it was like the bright like crazy gold 
but these are like a dull loud. You know what I mean? Because like the material does a lot of the talking for you, but I get the crease shit. If you're one of those guys that wears like the, the anti-toe crease things in your shoe, like this is cool. Uh, but yeah, patent leather in general is kind of just like a tough thing on the toe box. So I, I have a pair of the, um, the Space Jam SB highs. Uh, mm-hmm. because I thought that fit more of my uh, aesthetic. It does. As the guy who grew up in skateboard, like in skateboard culture, outside of skateboard culture, looking in <laughs> more realistically. But even then with those, I wore them once or twice maybe at most. The first time I wore them was for uh, the podcast with uh, Jesse and Chris from Tenet. Yeah. That was like the first time I wore those creased up like a motherfucker wore them a, a second time and then after that i've just been too afraid to wear them really yeah and i feel like i just would i would have the same issues with the with these shoes yeah i'm not i don't know i just i'm just not a fan of uh i, I think they kind of butchered these just a little bit like gentry is just i don't know I, the 80 the original uh the original uh 85 did not look like this no these are wedding shoes. These are the, these are the dunks that you, you know, like the dude's like, all right, I'll get all these from my, my, uh, my wedding party. You know, I'm not mad at that. I can see that. I'm not saying that Nike has a quota of like, all right, there's gotta be one shoe that you can wear in a wedding a year. But I feel like this is like, they must have like some roundabout way of having a checklist like this, where it's like, all right, so we got it. We got one. For the guy who can wear it in the wedding, you know? How about this? There's a fly Jordan for a guy to rock climb in. You know, I feel like they have, like, a dumb list that they always try to hit. I just feel like I just feel like this is another case of Gentry Humphrey saying, yo, you want this? Fuck what you want. Suck my dick. You're not going to get it because <laughs> I just don't like you people. I'm going to fucking take advantage of, you know, uh, of what I just – I'm not going to give you what you want. And I think that's what it is because – the original, the, the 1985s look completely different and they had a different feel and these just feel like blah, blah, blah. You're not going to get what you want. Yeah. It's true. Uh, Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say. All right. I, I just, but I, I don't like these ones, but I don't like any of the upcoming ones. Speaking of upcoming ones, we have motherfucking J Balvin. Uh, did I say it right? J Balvin. J Balvin. I mean, these are, Luke, if I've ever seen a uh, shoe for you, bud. These are a shoe for me? I don't know. They ha- they ha- they scream Luke to me. Oh. I- what are you trying to say, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? Did you just try to say something? You trying Yo, to say something right now? That's, a, that's, a, that's always a great insult is when you see someone wearing an ugly shoe. And yeah. then you, you just tap your friend. You'd be like, yeah, I kind of feel like you would like these. <laughs> what you I can trying see to say, you in those. I can see you in those. <laughs> oh, these are the J Balvins, man. These, there's rainbow colored co- cardboard cutouts on shoes. I don't. Wait, so this, this is the dude that followed Travis in the, in the um, McDonald's shit, though. He was number two on the McDonald's collab, right? Correct. Yeah, correct. So he's also doing a Jordan? That is, correct. that is correct. Okay, and he also has a smiley face logo. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It's a lot of people with smiley face logos. Right? Yes. What's Justin that? Bieber with whatever what's his brand name? Like Barbara or some shit? I don't know. Justin Bieber, Cactus Plant Flea Market. Right. Uh right? They have one. And then yeah. Chinatown Market and then Cactus yeah. Jack. He is like more of like a frowny face. But then, and then Jay Balvin, and then every bodega, um, thank you for coming in back. That's right. But, but, but this one has lightning bolts for eyes. Oh, that's right. So it's a oh, fragment, it's, <laughs> it's a fragment Chinatown market collab. Oh, so it's Jay different Balvin. is what I'm saying. That's all, you know, you can't, you can't knock the guy. Also the, the cat, I believe the cactus plant one has two sets of eyeballs. Oh, so that's true. Eyes. That's true. But this one also is spiky like a cactus, so. Okay, I, I feel like you're trying to say something here about J Balvin. Uh, I'm just saying, <laughs> I mean, you guys could do some math on that. I, uh, I mean, these are just crazy. I mean, it has everything else that everyone's doing in one shoe, just rainbow and spiky. Uh, okay. All right. So your initial, I remember your initial thoughts on J Balvin was that he is, uh, Spanish Travis Scott. I did. I say that? No, you didn't say that. I'm I'm paraphrasing. I 
for the listeners, I'm I'm paraphrasing. Don't no, but he. I'll, I'll call him Spanish Scott. That's fine. Let's do that. Spanish Scott. Hilarious. <laughs> El, My man, El Spanish Fuego. Scott. <laughs> La, La Fuego. Yeah. La Fuego. <laughs> La Fuego. That's, That's funny. great. La Fuego. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lito. <laughs> What's too far. Too far, too, far right? too, far, too far. What's lit in Spanish? Oh, we don't know. I can't I say know. anything else. I don't know. I don't know. Google Translate. Oh no. So it, oh, it, I got you guys. Hold on. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. So one of the things. This is the one thing I do like about about these shoes is the pink sole. I think the pink sole was the best decision on this entire thing because it's so like the rest of the shoe is so busy. But the, at least with the sole, like you found like a good contrast without it being white. I think that like that like light light pink just kind of works for it, uh, and just really leads to all of these things that Chris would love in a shoe. Wait, go back up for a second, uh, guys. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got some breaking news. <laughs> I got breaking news. <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> also, <laughs> I, it's it's lit in Spanish. Está entendido. Está tan lido. Oh, it's Lido. I was right. Está tan lido. Está tan lido. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Está entendido. En Está en Dino. En Dido. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, so, dude. Está en um, Dido. I'm just going to say, whoever's making J Balvin's uh, decisions, he must have similar agency or the same fucking people because it just seems like everything he's doing is somehow following. Um, you know what Travis Scott is doing, uh, but he's just like you said. It's, it feels like it's the tra- it's the Spanish Travis Scott. So okay, here's something to look out for because each of uh, Travis's shoes have sort of like a signature thing to them. But let's focus on the dunk, right? So this is a Jordan One. It's not whatever. But Travis's had the reverse swoosh. Okay, so if Jay Balvin, if they created a program where they're going to try to follow and uh, keep certain attributes about each collaborative shoe in a certain sector, the next shoe he's mm-hmm. going to have is going to be like some crazy gradient rainbow with spikes. Right? Uh-huh. So just go, moving forward to see how Nike's moving, if we just watch what Jay Balvin's next shoe is, if he gets one, you'll know that Nike has some sort of internal program where they're trying to like brand and create a certain aesthetic around uh, musicians. Okay, so you're saying if there's another shoe with kind of this like spiky silhouette? Yeah, you can say, kind of you can kind of like analyze that as a, an internal program that Nike is running because they're really good at branding people. I mean, you, we've seen it with every athlete, major athlete at least that they've had. They create a whole brand and aesthetic around this person. So if J Balvin gets another one where it's like this spiky crazy shit in like another gradient form, you're like, "Okay, you can see internally they they Talk to this guy. They built him up. Also, these are clearly a performance shoe. He's clearly supposed to wear these on stage in some crazy costume. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. I mean, that's. I mean, I mean, Travis Scott was wearing his ones, you know, during concerts. Yeah, that's what you know. Justin Timberlake was same thing. He wore the JTH threes, uh, you know, at the Super Bowl. Like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what yeah, that's what they're just they're not just giving them just to give. Like they're supposed to be. There's a there's something behind it. I mean, these one in particular, as you can see how this could be a part of a costume, though. Yeah. Well, let, let's let's talk bigger picture, guys. If you ha- do, you want a pair of these or no? No. No, I do not. If you got you got your hands on a pair of them, would you sell them for the high or would you say it's escondido? <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would sell them for the high. Muy bien, muy bien high. Muy bien high, yeah. Mucho, it, mucho high. Mucho high. I, I wonder if if these are going to, I mean, obviously, it, these are going to be super limited. We know that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I wonder how the hype is going to be on these. Uh, like, what kind of numbers are we looking at? Yeah, because they're not, they're not the most visually attractive shoe in terms of construct. Like, you know, like like these are, look, I mean, they're already at like $1,000. Oh, I mean, I mean, these are. I'm not going to say Travis numbers, but these are early Travis numbers. Okay, but this is, let's not forget, these are pre-sale numbers. Oh, that's true. Pre-sale, There's only 12 sales, yeah. Pre-sale are, numbers are fucking unreliable as hell. These are out These are uh, out the back door shoes. Like, these exactly. are, they got them through the back door, and now they're, you know, selling them on StockX. Um, yeah, I more, just, don't go through the back door. Go through, yeah. <laughs> don't go through the <laughs> front door. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Chris, what do you think of this, the canvas, the decision for canvas, though? Uh, I'm not mad at the material choice. I'm just mad at that it's not a good shoe, and it's like what everyone else is doing. Yeah. Not in that it's, you know, not everyone's doing a rainbow-colored shoe uh, with spikes on it, but it's – it just seems like a reach to get some sort of attention and it's executed in a similar way that all the other like artist brand collabs have been. Very well said. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to try to pay attention to see what else he does. Cause if we, if, if it, it is interesting to think that they have an internal program to like brand people and like run with a specific aesthetic. Yeah. You know, but that's, you know, I'm just going to keep my eye out for that. It sounds like you didn't like any of the Jordans that came out for december so chris what what if i told you there's kobe's coming out in december as well love kobe rest in peace rest in peace to, to also not really a kobe guy though so i don't know what to tell you there okay well grinches are coming out does that change your decision on anything changes my decision to look at you and go oh buddy i know you're buying a pair of those <laughs> oh buddy i'm gonna try to get a pair of those for sure now, if, if motherfuckers are striking out on random fives, on PJ <laughs> Tucker fives, it's going to be, that is going to be a battle royale. It's going to be so hard. It's going to be painful because everyone, the Grinches are universally loved. And, you know, obviously in this shitty 2020 that we lost one of the greatest basketball players who ever mm -hmm. graced the, the hardwood court. Um, yeah, man, I, these, I want them, but they're going to be, yeah. So now wait, Luke, I shoe. think you went on record as saying this was your number one grail. This, this wasn't my number one grail. I said it's on my list of grails. It was, uh, it's definitely on it's my list there. of sneakers of the year. I said sneakers of the decade. This was one of the sneakers of the decade for okay, me. Okay, maybe that's what it was. So I am going to try my hardest to get a pair of these. But oh, I, just already, I can already taste the L from here, dude. I just wanted you to speak on what makes this shoe so great to you. So, it, personally, it's, it's the night, the, the shoe, when I saw these shoes on TV, that's the, the, what kind of got me hooked on the shoe. Because I, I had never really, I don't really like Kobe's like that. But I just remember watch, like, being out, like, it was Christmas Day, like, we were watching basketball, the Heat were playing, the, 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 the Lakers, Lakers yeah. the, the LeBron and Wade and Chris Bosh were all together. And to, to the basketball world, Kobe was like the last defense against this super team mentality, right? It was just, it was basically Kobe versus these three, like basketball led like hall of famers mm -hmm. and fucking, what does he come out in? But like, he's got like the Christmas uniform and he's got these bright green shoes and I just see him on the court and he hits that fade away. And you just, you just, all you see are these shoes. And for me, that entire story and just like being able to like remember exactly where I was when I watched that like game, just it, this shoe just brings back a lot of memories for me about like early, like, like not early, but like, but like high school, like basketball days for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm with you on. Yeah. Those are, um, those are uh, I, just iconic. Like I said, those South beach, like those are like colorways that, we didn't we really never saw on a basketball sneaker before and this was one of those this, those, this, this is one, yeah, yeah yeah this grinch colorway um so i think it has like it, you know it, it just has a significance in many people's hearts and uh i mean yeah and then add, to add that to the fact that you know um, kobe you know the, the the way you know unfortunately kobe passed away in january yeah so i feel like you know people are going to be going out of their way to get a pair of these and um yeah and just like you know like i said we saw with the bruce lees um but the, the bruce lees are, are are loved but i think what we're gonna see with with kobe with the grinches are gonna be even you know it's gonna be even crazier yeah this is gonna be uh it's gonna be a rough one for sure mm -hmm. wait luke did you say that was contender for sneaker of the year is that what you said no well i said it was sneaker one of the sneakers of the decade but, okay excuse me yes but <laughs> We're getting close. We're getting close to having to decide a sneaker of the year, guys. It's 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 the end of November, you know. Yeah, it's gonna be really hard just because of the pandemic. Like it, the pandemic itself was so like we we couldn't go out. The we couldn't feel what was well recepted. I mean, like we got to see from Instagram, and we got to see some like counts, but we didn't really get to see them in person. That's true. 
Well, yeah, because I mean, I, I you know, I can think back to, I can think back, uh, you know, twenty uh, nineteen with the Travis ones and the Sakai's, and yeah. I, you know, twenty eighteen we had like Union ones and stuff like that, and even twenty seventeen we had the the off white, yeah, series, and and I just and people were like you said, you you were able to be out there, see, feel. And this year, it just feels obviously, like you said, like, you know, that's not there this year. No, I mean, just seeing well-cropped, fo- uh, you know, well-curated uh, photos of uh, some Ben and Jerry's along with the Chunky Dunks is cool and all. Right. But that doesn't make it, I don't like, I don't know, like all that yeah. hype minus the feeling for the year, but well-curated photos. Like, there was some crazy photos that – crazy photo shoots that went on this year just because everybody didn't have anything else to do because they couldn't wear them outside. So it's like, how do we even pick this? I don't mm-hmm. know, but maybe we should – all right, so maybe we should do – let's do – let's try to decide this week because I think we have a lot to decide. There are a lot of factors to decide sneaker of the year this year. So why don't we do um, pre, pre-pandemic? We'll, we'll start with that, like, right now. Like, what's your favorite okay. shoe of pre-pandemic? Pre-pandemic shoe of the year. <laughs> pre-pandemic shoe of the year. Yeah. So we go. We go pre-pandemic. We're going from uh, basically up until um, mid-March. Yeah. So, so like halfway March. So if the if the country the country went into shit, like March Friday, March thirteenth was the day that everyone was like, "All right, this is serious." And then March sixteenth, which is a Monday, I think that's when shit was like all right it's it, let's just friday the 13th is when we were cutting it uh, well since, since sneakers <laughs> that's just very funny no since sneakers do a lot of sneakers do come out on that on on the sat on saturdays we're gonna go up until march 14th all right that's march that's 14th. the cutoff so if the sneaker came out after march 14th we're not we're not gonna count it so that's pre-pandemic that's pre-pandemic baby i already got a thing i got a, i got one in my head already uh okay yeah, I got one. Luke, you go first, I guess. Okay, so my my sneaker of pre-pandemic has to be, I've talked about it multiple times on the show, I got to go uh, Nike SB Strange Love Lows. Uh, the reason I love those shoes is, one, I, I think just like that velour velvet material on the shoe, I just really love uh, the way they were able to like kind of tell like this valentine's day like make a great valentine's day shoe that feels like it could be like worn whenever in the year and Mm -hmm. just like it's just pretty man it's like there's like the colors just kind of like pop off of the shoe i just think it was just a great use of the dunk silhouette was that that color okay i can i can totally i can totally agree with you on that man it's one of the most it's a beautiful well thought out well executed sneaker um so yeah I, I, that's totally valid what about yeah, you Chris? i'm not mad at you for that my pick i just made sure i checked the date on these when these came out mine's a dunk surprise surprise uh i wasn't gonna go with the travis scott paisley dunk all right did they have an official name just the travis scott like you know bandana print dunk or whatever we just call them travis scott dunks <laughs> yeah exactly. trav dunks um cactus jack sent me here <laughs> yes cactus <laughs> jack skated over here <laughs> cactus jack told me to skate over here <laughs> It's lit. <laughs> uh, those to me are super important in the timeline of this year being the year of the dunk because it was early in the year and it was a Travis stamp very early on. So I think because they gave him a dunk that uh, I, if I remember it, what, the first reveal was him at a Laker game or he was at a, he was at a basketball game. And I think that was the first time people saw him wearing it, which was before the release date, obviously. So Yo, it was I- very early. I got to be straight up with you for a second. I literally thought to myself when you said he, he was at a uh, basketball game, I was like, when do they let people back in the basketball game? Like, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying, all no, pre-pandemic. I, I literally forgot that people were allowed to go to basketball games. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> do we, do we, free, we covered the entirety of the bubble, not realizing that there was a basketball before the bubble. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was people going to games and shit, man. I'm, I'm not mad at that either. Uh... You like the tearaway aspect of it? 
It's not even the tearaway shit. I'm just going to be honest with you, man. It's just that Travis Scott had a dunk, and it was early in the year. And I think that caused uh, – I think that helped the wave that was the dunk wave grow. You think it set the tone pretty nicely. Right? Yeah, and the material choice is nice. I mean, if you look at the way he's branded and his color palette that he uses, it was very on par for uh, – very, like, on course for that. And I think what the, the laces were rope, weren't they? Yeah, rope laces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's kind of a cool story involved with that, too. So that's why I'm going to go with that one. Okay. Um, I, I'm I'm kind I'm with Luke on uh, in terms of uh, strange loves, but I I will say in terms of what had the most hype and also nice rollout, even though it really wasn't readily available unless you were super unless you were in like Chicago. I'm gonna say off white fives, the uh, the black. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I always, like I said, I always, I always liked them from even when, when, when we first saw them. And I know Chris was kind of like, oh, well, they have holes in them. But I'm like, you know. I'm I, hating on the holes. I, I will remain hating on the holes. My I, shoes should not have holes in them. I remember flip-flopping on those shoes a couple times. Like, it took me a couple, like, when we first saw the product shots. Uh, I think Chris got, Chris, you got like a hookup or something? And you showed us product shots early? I may have. <laughs> yeah, I I was privy to both colorways much before the general audience was. What well, uh, I mean, you went on Reddit and you found them is what I meant. I said that's what I said right there. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Uh, someone DM'd me them. <laughs> yeah, no, but you showed yeah you showed us those and I was like, there's holes in it. I don't know, man. But Lawrence was a day one for that shoe. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I definitely enjoyed. It. I thought it was well thought out, well executed shoe, um, and I just remember like people being going crazy for them. Like they, people wanted those shits bad, but they also, I mean, like I said, I think Trav, Trav, Strange Loves, you cannot go wrong. I do remember, and I'll say this, I remember Strange Loves not having the same, like you know that 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 SB hype. Like if Strange Loves came out and june they would have been hyped up to the moon if that makes sense oh yeah when they came out yeah. in february they were they were well regarded but i don't remember people going as crazy as they did for those as they did like the traps i do remember people going i think that was the first time we saw on inst on like social media people being like if you want these shoes, you got to wear them out the door. Like, I think that was like one of the first one, or I saw a sign that said like, if you want these shoes, they don't come with a box and you got to wear them out. I think that was like one of the early ones where we started to see skate shops kind of like fight back against bots and shit and resellers. And I, and I also remember like on the secondary market, they were going for like four or $500 I know out the gate. And I think I remember people were kind of turned up. They were like, I'll be damned if I pay $400 for these for oh. these, you know, that's insane. And then you, you look back and you're like, well, that was kind of a deal. I fucking, I'm so mad that I didn't get them when yeah. they were. Because I remember we had a discussion about it too. And you were like, I don't know, man. I think you should get them. And I said, no. Yeah, I'm, yeah, listen, dude, I, I, you know, I, you, you know what I, how I felt about how I, you know, it's, you just saw, you saw what, what, what happens. And I see it a lot of times. And sneakers where we kind of were like, oh, I don't want to like move some shit to get those. And then next thing you know, the price just becomes to the point where it's like, okay, this, no. But you, can't. you just can't. You can't, yeah. You know what's so. really funny? It was I, I mean, I texted you guys the, the shoe. So I had a pair of those uh, fucking, what were they called? Those was those dunks I sent you that I had at my house. Uh, the high magnet ones. Oh, yeah, the mm -hmm. magnet grays. I got those as a gift, I think, from some of I don't even know how I really got those. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I'm not more I'm not really into these. So I put them aside and then I checked stock. There's not many pairs on there right now, which is surprising. Mm -hmm. I feel like these are kind of like were like a whatever one that I think mad people would have. But the only one there's one thing on there that in the ask is nine fifty. Yeah. yeah. So like minimally this shit I just had at my mom's so was not even like what like these were whatevers. That's yeah. at least four hundred on eBay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I feel like there's a lot of people like you go check your closet. I didn't even know I had these. I really had no idea. I knew I had like a, a couple pairs of dunks, but I didn't know these were in there. And these are probably the best ones. The other ones were like just general release shit that I beat to shit, like mowing the lawn and shit. But like, I was, I'm like, that's the $400 that was just sitting there this whole time. 
Yeah, bro, yeah. I feel you. I just uh, I found some of my old Pokemon cards recently, and I found like a, a holographic Raichu, which is like if it's like in perfect condition, is like eighty bucks. Wait, from which set? From base set. Because there was the dark Raichu from the second set. I know about the dark Raichu. I am familiar. We lost Lawrence. We lost Lawrence. <laughs> we lost Lawrence yeah, immediately. I, I tuned out. Yeah, I was like, oh, but let them talk. I'm saying, like, you know, there's money. There's, like, money lying around your house, like, if you're not, like, in the least expected places. <clears throat> I, I will say there. I am getting to the point where I'm like, Lawrence, just sell, like, a lot. Just sell your you shit. Yep. You know what I mean? Your you sneakers and, and call it a day. Because there's so, like you said, there's so many you sneakers that people will fucking you know i don't know i, I there's yeah i want to get rid of some of my used sneakers that's the best put, way to describe it i put up four pairs this week four pairs of used sneakers what'd you sell uh i got i'm <laughs> let's see so i'm getting rid of the space jams for the reason that i'm just too afraid to wear them <laughs> uh mm-hmm. what's the other one the bo jacksons are uh, they kill my pinky toe way too much mm-hmm. so i gotta get rid of them uh the I'm getting rid of the mids. That's a, that's a, it's a, an end of a short era. We were in it was pandemic times, and I was like, I'll be a I'll be the crazy guy who has mids. Mm-hmm. And then I got the mids, and I was like, I don't have enough power to make these a thing. You know, I can't beat the force of the entire sneaker world. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm letting go of the mids. And then I also am getting. Uh, I also got rid of the Royal Toe Jordan ones because I just I needed to offload some some cash flow you know I that's, gonna be like, that's gonna be like 250 right there those those three those first three pairs and then plus the royal jordan would be like 500 dollars. you know it'll be nice nice little change in my pocket that's what it that's what it real really boils down to and it's like like you said man you have thousands of dollars of just product that you're just like that's just sitting around yep and you have to really sit there and be like you know after a while it's like hmm mm-hmm you know, I, I think that's my biggest. Uh, but you know, you, you, the thing about it is, you 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 know, you you're like fuck. Like, I don't know. It's weird because like each sneaker sometimes has that sentimental. Those, I know, bro. They that got sentimental, sentimental value. Shit. It, oof. No, I saw I saw a lot. I had like a lot of weird custom. I sent you some of the pictures. I didn't send you guys all of them. I had some weird custom Reeboks that I I got as like a special occasion thing and like. Mm-hmm. Not that anyone cares about Reebok that much that where like they're gonna sell, especially if you don't know what they are. But some of them, I was like, I should sell these, but these like hold too much like sentiment of value because like some of my first big hookups that I got from mm-hmm. people, like mm-hmm. I got blessed for the first time with these ones, so it's like I gotta keep them. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. The, which, which ones? The Zig Techs? Yeah, my hypeless heat is gonna be this uh, Zig Encore. So John Walls, like you know, he was like the face of the Zig. I have a Jason Terry pair that I no. got as a gift that I don't think even the, I don't know if the public got them or not, but like I'll, I'll, I have pictures I'll show you guys, but the nice. Zig Encore was like a, a couple of those. I was like, damn, these are kind of nice. Do you guys want to just jump into hy- hypeless heat right now then? Yeah. Yeah. We could worry about time, right? Yeah. We're yeah. at that time, man. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, since I just said them, hold on, let me f- cover me while I find like a photo of the regular shoe. Oh man. Uh, Lawrence, what, what, what are you looking to sell? Are you trying to move anything right now? Hold on, hold on. I think he's gonna he's he's gonna turn this episode into like a bidding war. For his oh no, <laughs> bro! I got like fifty bucks on me. That's it. Like I can't can't be spending no money on on Lawrence sneakers. But maybe our Discord would. Hey, if you're not if you're a listener to the show, why don't we take this moment and ask you guys to uh, join our Discord? It's yeah. a lot of fun. It's a great community. Uh, shout out to those guys. We're super thankful. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, oh there they are lows. oh my god it's one of those it's one of those things where you're like bro you, you can't know. sell those but it's like you get to that point bro where it's like i i've had these for 15 years it's like how much longer that's true yeah no that's yes that's very true i mean but they're but they're they're dunks and it's like you look like i even look at the bottom the bottoms are still like oh, oh it's like it's like come on like what are you what are you doing like oh the- you are sitting on a fucking stack huh what yeah, are they what are those going for right now i mean you like after a while like the only thing that's really messed up about them is the swoosh is the swoosh i saw i saw the swoosh but it's bare, like you know it's like but the rest of the sneaker is like it's in it's great condition great so condition it's when you when you start really sitting there and you're like yo like but at the same time like you said like you, you know 
they all have some type of stupid story to them. You understand what I'm saying? Like, like, like it, it, like at the end of the day, it's like, oh, well, that's that's brand new. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, they they all have some stupid story. Like, oh, I remember when you know I got like, and I think that's the problem. But I think you have to sometimes take out that emotion behind it. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. Well, yeah, because yeah. like I was, you know, you watch these videos online of these guys with like, like Mayor has like a fucking two two rooms two floors of fucking sneakers mm-hmm. and you're just like at what point man like you never we can't i mean mayor May, we can't count mayor in this shit mayor is mm-hmm. like a whole nother it's a mm-hmm. different it's a no that, that's taking it to its extreme right yeah that's mm-hmm. like taking it to extreme like you know he's got a great collection no no shade to him respect him all 100 percent. but still at what point you know at what point do you yeah. as like a as a normal like as somebody who doesn't like doesn't wake up one day and decide I'm going to have the biggest and most expensive sneaker collection in the world. Uh, you know, as like a normal guy, at what point do you like, just, are you just holding on to like, you're just hoarding stuff, you know? So I do hear you. I feel you. It, it, I think it gets to that point. Like, I mean, honestly, and what I'm going to say is I think, I think what everyone needs to realize is I think anything with the air bubble or with the soul that can disintegrate you got to really start weighing your options in terms of what you need to do or what can you do with the shits because, yeah. you know, but when it comes to dunks and like Jordan ones, like I, those things are indestructible. Like they'll be around forever if you properly take care of them. Yeah. I had those, uh, those board flips, those ice creams, the Pharrell mm-hmm. joints that he did with uh, Reebok and yeah. those sell well. I had, those are from 2006. Mm-hmm. I have those. I'm, I still have them going. I don't wear them. I'm, they're th- I did wear them, though. W- way more than, you know, the fucking tiffs you got. But I'm still looking at these like, what am I doing? Got to get rid of these. What am I doing? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. Getting old must suck, guys. I think I'm going to be <laughs> young forever and have all the sneakers I could ever want. Hilarious. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's jump to Hypo Seat. So, yeah. uh Mine, which, uh, you know, was inspired by the many that I real- didn't realize I had at my mom's house is the Zig Encore, which was the follow up to uh, John Wall's introduction to Reebok with the Zig Slash. Oh, man. Um, so, I mean, this colorway was a launch colorway. So I'll use this as the, you know, the one that uh, for the card. But um, there was so many colorways. There was so many different versions of these. And I have like ones that I don't even know if they came out necessarily just because I was at the build you know i was in the building at the time so these ones in specific these jason terry uh player editions were probably my favorite out of the ones i didn't know i had these are the slash yeah yeah these These are are the original ones these are the slash these are the slash the zig encore i think was the entirety like my favorite one these are the original ones that uh that jason terry was wearing ah got you but yeah fuck yeah dude these are a nice shoe yeah, so I played ball in like all these though, so that's the problem. Is like not only are they like like these obscure Reeboks, but I did play in them. <laughs> so it's, you know, you're Jason. You could just pretend you're Jason Terry. These are just yeah. shoot, shootout shoes. And that was when he was on the Celtics, so I, you know, I was extra hyped for those. <laughs> Get, getting dunked on by LeBron. <laughs> uh, you know, we don't need to. What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, look, I know we've got to shit on two great Celtics players this episode, and that's yeah. fine. Right, mm-hmm. but I low blows from each of you. I know. I, I taking, Listen, let's not forget. Nate, let's not forget. Nate was wearing those Knicks colors. So there you go. Well, he's an all-time great Celtic. I don't care what anyone he's, says. He's, he's all-time, a, <laughs> all-time terrible Nate. Uh, all-time terrible Knicks player. Deez and Murrow said those aren't Knicks colors. Those are Mets colors. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> oh, I agree. That's hilarious. That's very funny. That's that very is, very funny. Oh shit! Uh, I'm gonna do my hypo seat for the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, my pick this week uh, is going to be 99 Products, the chalk-colored um, uh, sneaker that they do. 99 Products, a uh, big listener of the show, big fans of us. They sent us uh, like little gift coupons for shoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a pair in the mail, and uh, boy, do I fucking love these shoes. They are light on your feet. Uh, they're just, they feel really comfortable. I use these shoes for work all the time. Um, I, I fell in love with these shoes immediately when I started wearing them. They're like a yellow color, which is, but it's like pastel yellow enough where like they can pretty much go with anything and mm-hmm. they do kind of pop, uh, nicely without being too loud. I know Chris is 
pretty anti yellow sneaker, but for these kind of these work, man. Uh, no, I still have my pair. So they, they've uh, they've blessed us now twice. So thank you guys so much. I still have my first pair. I gave my other pair for this time to Tanner because Tanner not only loves yellow but loves these shoes. Tanner beat his to shit. I use really mine. Did. Yeah, yeah, he beat his to shit. I wear mine very casually. The style isn't necessarily for me, but I can't deny that they're a very comfortable shoe. Uh, they're right here in New York City. They're in Harlem. Uh, so I love that they're local. So if you guys, Christmas gifts coming up, whatever, Hanukkah, like, you know, if you want to go local, they're right up the street. Right up the street. They have two colorways now, this uh, whiteboard colorway as well, which is like a, a gray and white and black colorway. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not. I didn't know about these shoes. Like I don't, I haven't really seen many pictures of them, but uh, I ordered a pair during black Friday for myself. I did cheat a little and I did get an extra pair of like uh, on, on their website because they were doing a great deal. Uh, if you put in the code black Friday, it's 50% off. I don't know if it's still off by the time you're listening to it, but I strongly suggest you try it out because uh, $45 for like a pair of shoes like these uh, is a steal. Yeah, I definitely agree with you guys. Those are, uh, I, I truly enjoy, uh, I have the, the chalk color uh, way of this sneaker as well. Extremely comfortable. Uh, like you said, Chris, locals, New York City, Harlem based. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's always, that's a plus. And uh, yeah, definitely. They, they're very flashy, stylish. When I go to the barbershop, I wear them. Uh, barber's always like, yo, I need a pair of those. So now I'm definitely going to, uh, you know, I might just hook them up actually, you know. Oh, there you go, huh? There you go. Bless that's the barbershop. Yeah, that's my dude, too. I might, yeah, I might hook him up. Hey. Hey. Yeah, so. All right, yeah. What do you got, buddy? Oh, me, uh, <laughs> a Nike, Nike Kill Shot, too. <clears throat> oh. Kill Shot. That's not really a Lawrence sneaker. It really isn't. Nah, actually, you know what's funny? I have the... Um, Oh man, I forgot what they're called, but I I like sometimes I do like the low key shit like that, you know. And um, which depends. colorway though? I like the blue one. The the blue swoosh. Yeah, blue swoosh navy. Ooh. Okay. That is navy. Yeah, it's navy. Yeah, I like the navy joints. These are a classic shoe, man. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah J, J Crew, and you can cop them shits at J Crew. Yeah, they're like fire, bro. Bro, so nice, so nice. Even like. Like some of the other colorways too, like the green and the maroon. It's just a very clean shoe overall, you know. Was it? This is originally in a tennis shoe, yeah. Yes, okay. I believe so. Yeah, it, this is just one of those ones they made for a sport that skaters were like, "Nah, we can skate in these." Yeah, for sure. My brother owns a pair of these. Uh, his friend gave them to him uh, because I'm a bad brother and I don't hook him up with sneakers. No, uh, you take that shit for yourself. Up. I do. I really am <laughs> selfish. Uh, but I tell you what, like, he, yeah, he, he upgraded his whole style off of just like you could build an entire wardrobe around the kill shots and be just a pretty fly dude at like a pretty low price. Yep. There you go. You buy one kill shot with the one color swoosh. Then you get all the outfit around that. Then you like, all right, now I'm going to get a red shirt and I'll get the red kill shots. Oh, shit. I've upgraded to red now. Oh, shit. Because then you can mix and match, right, with that. And then once right. you get the green, the green. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Oh, man. And then it's Christmas time and you got green and red. <laughs> like, <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> well, then, yeah, uh, I, think, I, I, think this is, uh, I think this has been great. All right. I think that's it. I think you're right, Lawrence. This is a great episode. Uh, any last thoughts, everybody? Uh, no, I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, the holiday season coming up, just travel safe. Don't fuck up anyone's life, especially if in New York city, don't forget, like if you get it, you have to quarantine for 14 days. Yeah. So if you're, tra if you have to travel like me, I'm so scared that I'm going to come in contact with somebody and I'm going to have to quarantine. It's going to be around Christmas. That's my only thing. So everyone oh, that's just wear your mask until after the holidays. You can kiss me on Valentine's day and give me COVID. But before then let's wear your mask and just chill out and just chill out. There you go. Just chill out. Uh, join the Discord. Uh -huh. uh, link will be in the in the description of this video. Uh, of this as always. podcast, as always. Um, uh, so give us a subscribe if you haven't. Uh, rate the rate the podcast. Uh, wherever you are listening, that helps a lot. Um, let's see what else you can find. Chris at Not That Cheney on all social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Lawrence at LZD three two five on all uh social media platforms. 
uh, me at Trevisus on all social media platforms and the podcast on Sup Podcast NYC at all major uh, social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Shoot us a Gmail to subpodcastnyc at gmail.com. Yep. Send us what you're thinking. Let us know. And then there's also a voicemail thing that nobody does, but like you should. You we'll should. have a good time. They only, they only send gibberish nonsense, and I haven't done it for a while. So send me some gibberish nonsense now so I can show Lawrence and Luke because I feel like I made that shit up before. And, uh, yeah, that's it. There you go. All right, guys. All right. All right. Peace. <laughs>